Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With that said, let's meet our two fighters. Alpha, the Light of Tome, and K.O., the Plaza Hero. Which of these two video game inspired protagonists will win in a battle to the death? But don't be fooled by that little connection. They have more in common than you may realize. I. Am. Great! Hello, hi, here I am, a customer! This is Universes. Everyone has their own special game. That game they go to when they want to have a good time and hang out with friends. For Michael, or as you may know him by his username, Alpha, Tome is that game. Alpha and his group of friends would typically spend their time fighting off hackers who are making the game a pain for everyone else. However, the fun soon ended as during one battle, Alpha accidentally came across a glitch in the game. The glitch gave him access to one of Tome's deepest and most hidden files, simply known as the Forbidden Power. This virus attached itself to Michael's weak-willed mind and possessed him. While it did give him extra help in taking down hackers, it also made it easy for him to lose control, so Alpha must do his best to fight off these threats while keeping his power in check. Luckily, he has more than enough other dangerous tools for fighting off his enemies. Alpha is a very skilled player, already seeming to know the controls of Tome in and out when we first meet him. His arsenal of moves include several melee attacks like punches and kicks. One of his special punches, called the Vulcan Fist, allows him to charge up power and launch forward. He also has the Orion Shield. This is a green barrier that Alpha can throw a barrage of or use to block attacks. Alpha also has elemental based attacks, including water, lightning, and then fire when using the Vulcan Fist. Alpha is quite mobile too, able to glide and leap several feet into the air, but here's where things get scary. That forbidden power I mentioned earlier is one force to be reckoned with. It surrounds Alpha in a barrier of glowing static, and he can use it for defense or send it out for attack. Simply touching this barrier will not only hurt your character in Tome, but even harm you in real life, reaching beyond the virtual reality to trick your brain into feeling agonizing pain. Now at first this power would usually send Alpha into a blind rage in his demon form, but he later learned to control it, merging with the virus and even gaining a healing factor from it that's strong enough to repair limbs. When teaming up, Alpha and this virus become one deadly duo. In his base form, Alpha is superior to Raccoon who can break down gigantic stones with his bomb attack and has survived several blasts that could plow right through Tome's landscape. He's fast enough to catch bullets from a machine gun at point-blank range, and has reacted to his own lightning-based attacks when they were being used against him. The Forbidden Power is once again where it gets scary though, as it's a virus that has the power to completely destroy the entire world of Tome. Granted, this world only consists of three small town-sized areas, but it's still an impressive feat, especially since Alpha can not only use, but also survived its power as well when he took on Zeto when he was infected and possessed by the Forbidden Power. And to keep it consistent, Alpha also survived the antivirus that was literally designed to destroy the Forbidden Power. Alpha's no slouch in skill either though as he was able to beat the very designers of Tome. He's definitely the game's biggest beast. But let's see if KO's tougher than any regular old game designer. So much. Yeah, what a weirdo. Okay. Everyone at least has one dream in their life where they become a hero and battle the forces of evil. But for young little 6 to 11 year old boy KO, it's his entire life's goal. His early life was spent collecting POW cards and watching all of his favorite heroes save the day. The day would soon come though where KO would get his chance to be a hero himself. After visiting a store called Gar's Bodega, K.O. became acquainted with the employees there, Rad and Enid, leading them to assist in convincing their boss Mr. Gar to hire him. It wasn't just for being so darn cute though, K.O. had to put the idea in their heads by displaying stealth and bravery as he invaded their enemies at Boxmoor without fear. Not to mention he's the son of Silver Spark, a hero who was once on the legendary team Point. All these facts convinced those around him that he was ready to begin his training to become a true hero, which for some reason involves working at a store. Now at the start, K.O. had a lot to learn. While he had the heart to accomplish his goals, his abilities weren't quite enough. Thankfully though, over his first year of working, his powers have grown. K.O. has become very skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, able to rip through metal robots with physical attacks including punches and kicks. In fact, he even has a slide kick, allowing him to scoot across the ground for an extreme distance. More on that later. 
KO also has many ranged attacks too though. One of them is a battle cry so loud it can damage foes. And then there's the Power Fist Fireball, a powerful key attack that he can shoot at his foes. KO can amplify these moves with a secret raging power hidden within. He calls it Turbo KO, or TKO for short. In this form, KO is able to fly, fire lightning-like projectiles, and even produce some kind of energy-lowering field. When KO fully transforms into TKO, he goes berserk and has a very hard time controlling TKO's rage. However, KO soon made a deal with TKO, allowing him to use some of the abilities and powers without fully transforming. Then finally, KO has fourth wall awareness. He knows he's in a cartoon and can leap in and out of his own dimensional plane. Aside from his cartoon logic though, KO has some great physical feats. In terms of power, KO is no slouch. As mentioned before, he can shatter metal robots with ease and is able to completely thrash his nemesis Boxman. What's so special about that, you may ask? Well, Boxman is tough enough to survive his entire factory exploding with him inside on multiple occasions, and he survived three months inside of the sun after getting launched to it. When he transforms into TKO, he's powerful enough to launch Rad into orbit and damage the entire plaza, both of which have been calculated to city block levels of destructive power. When it comes to speed, KO has dodged plenty of missiles, lasers, and some lightning based attacks. It goes from 0 to 100 here though, as KO has also gone around the entire world in just about 10 seconds on multiple occasions, one of them including a slide kick. Considering the distance around the Earth is just under 25,000 miles, KO must be traveling at Mach 11,000, sub relativistic speeds at 1.3% the speed of light. Is it quick enough to beat Alpha? Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Hi guys, Aiden Care here, bringing you a quick universes prediction, and this prediction is for Alpha from Tome versus KO from OKKO. OK now, before I get into the prediction, I just want to say go watch Tome. I had a great time watching it, and I'm going to link it in the description because I'm pretty sure most of you guys will really like it. So, on to the prediction. I'm honestly going to have to give this to Alpha, mostly just because he's got the main factors over KO. To start off with, Alpha has the power of the Forbidden Power, which at its peak was stated to be able to destroy Tome. And Tome is basically the actual world Tome, is this giant continental sized thing, which is far greater than the city level powers the, T the TKO form has been calculated to give KO. Alpha also has better speed as it's able to dodge and react to lightning attacks and also different lasers, while KO doesn't really have anything that impressive in terms of reaction speed. Alpha's also got a much better arsenal as he's got several different attacks, different shields, fire and lightning attacks, which is stuff that KO can't really deal with as all TKO can do is give KO a couple of electrical attacks and also like just bigger energy fists. So that's all stuff that Alpha's dealt with before, so nothing the TKO or KO can do will surprise Alpha. In terms of intelligence and experience, I'd say Alpha would also take that. Alpha's gone through high school, he's a really good combat strategist, KO more relies on other people for that, and isn't really that intelligent even compared to a middle schooler, or for me a primary schooler. You've also got the fact that Alpha's been consistently playing Tome, and has been playing it for like multiple hours straight, constantly fighting against hackers and his teammates in sparring sessions, while KO only really fights a robot or two a day, and has mostly just been doing janitorial work and organizing stuff. And also, while you could argue that KO's been at the Bardega longer than Alpha's been playing Tome, Alpha's definitely got better experience compared to KO. So it's for all these reasons that I think Alpha is definitely going to win the next universes. And the results are in. The winner is... Sir Alpha of the Roman numerals. So says I. Leo, albino of the sensitive skin. You'll get it if you've seen Tome. Oh, that was cringy. Oh, and I just said cringe unironically. Uh, on to the results. Well, alrighty, let's begin. I already know the first thing people will bring up is KO scaling to Boxman's sun feet. I say this because surprisingly, a lot of people think that simply surviving on the sun makes you star level, which is just plain silly. I mean, living on Earth doesn't make you planet level. Anyways, even at the core of the sun, it would only grant you up to country level their ability to survive there for three months. And at the surface, where Boxman was, it would barely even scratch building level. 
Yeah, the sun is weird. KO doesn't even need that scaling since he already has his own physical feats reaching up to city block levels, but that's nothing compared to Alpha who holds the power of a virus able to destroy entire towns. Now KO does have the edge in speed, and you could say he'd be able to avoid most of Alpha's attacks by jumping out of the fourth wall. But if you remember, Alpha's forbidden power can reach past his virtual reality into our own physical plane, so KO's little cartoon logic wouldn't quite work there. What? But Leo! Alpha got rid of the forbidden power at the end of Tome! Shut up, Vic. Go away. No one likes you. While true, we are looking at these characters at their peak, not some random point in time. Besides, Alpha had already lost the Forbidden Power once at an earlier point, and was able to fight off Zeto when he was infected by 97% of its power. May not have been the full 100%, but it's more than close enough to overpower anything KO has done. Now you could bring up KO's speed yet again as some kind of straw grasping defense, but Alpha has several things that could get around it. Alpha is way more skilled and experienced. Both have been fighting the same amount of time, but Alpha's threats have been much bigger and greater. Alpha also has more control over the Forbidden Power than KO does over TKO. Then last but not least is Alpha's ability to regenerate limbs almost instantly. Don't get me wrong, KO is one tough kid, and he'll likely get stronger than he already is now as he's still at the beginning of his journey. But with Alpha being able to counter his biggest advantage, with Alpha's own advantages outnumbering his by a long shot, KO gets KO'd. The winner is Alpha. Oh, hey guys. <sighs> Get ready for the next battle.